Usually the more taxes a company pay, the less money they are going to make. That's why they go through all these accounting troubles in order for them to lower their tax expenses. Today we are going to look at a different company. This one, it takes advantage of accounting rules in order for them to make money from taxes. It gets even better they are using these taxes in order for them to buy back shares. In other words, they are using money that they should be paying their government in order to reward the shareholders. And I am a happy shareholder of this company. To understand how this company is able to do this, we first need to understand how companies pay taxes. All companies have to file the financial reports in GAAP, generally accepted accounting principles. This is the standard used by every US company to make it easy for everyone to understand. When you see revenues, it has only one meaning. Does it mean that revenues for one industry is different from another? But it is not always accurate. And Warren Buffett likes to point that out. For example, when we look at a company like Berkshire Hathaway, because of their unrealized profits from their investments, it is counted as net income, but in reality, it is not a real profit. It is unrealized. And when it comes to insurance companies in general, GAAP can be very misleading. And that's why they use something called statutory accounting. So what is statutory accounting and how is it different from GAAP? Let's take an example. Let's say there is an insurance company. They have their premiums, which they count as revenues. And then there is a certain amount that they have to pay the policies over the long term. But according to GAAP, only what they have paid in the financial year is counted as an expense. But according to statutory accounting, even the policies that they have to pay 10 years from now should be counted for. So they need to take into consideration credit requirements because they are future expenses. These future expenses should be counted for even today because there is a certain amount of money that the companies, the insurance companies, they need to set aside in order for them to pay that. So this is a real expense, but according to GAP, since it was not made this year, it should not be counted as an expense. But if you want to really understand the insurance business, you have to understand statutory accounting. Tax accounting itself really depends on the government. And in the case of insurance companies, since they are regulated by state governments instead of the federal government like banks, if you are an insurance company, you have to be structured in such a way that if you want to operate in all 50 states, you need to have 50 different companies each one in a different state. So different tax laws in each of these states. Of course, they all have to pay taxes to the federal government. So what they do is that they create a holding company, a payright company, which owns all these small subsidiaries. And this is exactly how Genwell Financial operates. And if you look at the last quarterly report of Genwell Financial, you will see that they made 64 million US dollars out of taxes. Before we talk more about Genwell Financial and how they are able to make money from taxes, please make sure to smash the like button so that this video spreads throughout the YouTube universe. So how does it work? When you're investing in Genwell Financial, you're investing in the Payright company. But the Payright company doesn't have any operations by itself. Its only function is to exist so that the subsidiaries can operate. The operating businesses are the subsidiaries. In the case of Genwell Financial, it is a long-term care insurance business. Say you want to use the services of Genwell Financial, you don't go to the payright company, you go to one of the operating subsidiaries. But for you, the name is the same, you won't know about it. It's just about the structure, the way the company is structured. The operating companies, they don't pay any taxes. What they do instead is send the taxes to the payright company. And it is the duty of the payright company to pay taxes. Why it is like this? Don't ask me. Ask those people who wrote the rules. I did not write these rules. But here's the thing. Genwell Financial, the payright company, has 1.9 billion US dollars in deferred tax assets on its balance sheet. It got this from an accumulation of losses. Over the past decades, the company has been losing money. So the more money that they have been losing, they have been getting these benefits from the government in order for them not to pay taxes because the government did not want them to go bankrupt. Another way that they got this is from the partial IPO of ENAC. So they had a mortgage insurance business. But now that ENAC pays their taxes by themselves, they don't rely on the payright company. The payright company got additional deferred tax assets. And the third way that they got this, this is the biggest way, is from unrealized losses. Because they have bonds in their portfolio when interest rates were rising, prices of bonds went down. The ones that they have on their portfolio, because of these unrealized losses, they got additional 
different tax assets on the balance sheet. Genwa Financial is a very complicated business. The sole purpose of the business is to exist and allow its operating subsidiaries well to operate. If you want to understand in more details how Genwa Financial operates, it is a company I've been looking at for the past four years. Please, please have a look at the full analysis on the Super Investors Club. On the Super Investors Club, you can have access to hundreds of analyses, full analysis of every company I have been following. You can have access to investing courses for beginners, even advanced courses. You can stay updated about my trades, you can share your analysis and stay connected with other passionate value investors. There's a special launch price, so please make sure to check out the Super Investors Club. So when Genwa Financial is paid these taxes from the operating subsidiaries, they don't use the cash to pay the federal government. Instead, they can lower their deferred tax assets. They use the cash then in order for them to buy back shares. Because the parent company, they don't have any obligation to put money back into the operating subsidiaries. So they are using taxes from operating subsidiaries in order for them to reward the shareholders of the parent company. Of course, it is totally legal. And this is one of the main ways that Genwa Financial is making money today. If you think about it, since there is this disconnect between the subsidiaries, the operating subsidiaries and the parent company, you can assume that they don't exist. Because as I told you, even if they go bankrupt, it won't affect the parent company. So let's assume they don't exist. All of the value of Genwa Financial comes from its partial subsidiary, that is ENAC. And if you look at the market today, even though they own 81% of ENAC, ENAC is bigger than the private company. This is the way that the management wants us to look at Genwa Financial. So there is a sort of arbitrage. If you buy Genwa Financial today, you are getting ENAC at a discount. But even ENAC, according to me, is undervalued. And this makes Genwa Financial undervalued. This is a different way to look at Genwa Financial. I have been investing in this company for over four years, and this is not the way that I look at it before. I always look at it, I try to see how much money they were losing from the operating subsidiaries. But another way you look at it is to ignore the operating subsidiaries, focus on ENAC. And if you're good enough, you will see that the intrinsic value both ways should be the same because it's the same company. And actually, that, that's what I found out. And I will see that Genwa Financial is still undervalued. However, I reduced my position on Gamer Financial recently because I already doubled my money on Gamer Financial. And since it became the largest position in my portfolio at 8%, I did not want to put that much risk on that single investment. I will recommend you watch this video about two other stocks I have recently sold. Have a nice day and goodbye.